What's good, everybody, man? Welcome to the Talking Sports with Manny YouTube channel. So, man, NFL Week 3 is over with, and tons of surprises, tons of storylines. But let's go ahead and start with the Carolina Panthers on Thursday night facing the Houston Texans. Look, the Carolina Panthers, they've been they've been a pleasant surprise this season. And Sam Darnold, say, what, say whatever you want to say about Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold has been solid for this team. Also, they lost Christian McCaffrey. Christian McCaffrey is a beast. Um, they lose him. Chubba Hubbard is now the guy. I don't know how to feel about Chubba Hubbard, but I will tell you that he will command a lot of volume. A guy that I was wrong about this season has been DJ Moore. DJ Moore had eight receptions for 126 yards. He's been amazing. Davis Mills came in and did a little bit of everything. Davis Mills was solid for this team. Okay, Can't be mad about Davis Mills at all. Also, I was wrong about Brandon Cooks. I didn't know that Brandon Cooks was going to be out here balling like he is this year. Nine receptions for 112 yards. Does it mean that Brandon Cooks is quarterback proof? Look, he had an amazing outing. Um, but this game is really not much to talk about other than Sam Darnold continues to play really good football. The loss of Christian McCaffrey, most likely two weeks because he wasn't put on the IR. So most likely two weeks. But Terrence Marshall is a guy that I love. Hopefully, he starts to come into his own. Roby Anderson has been terrible. He's been terrible. And you're going to start to see more and more of the Terrence Marshall show. So enough about that game. Let's go ahead and get into the second slate of games, which was the Washington football team versus the Buffalo Bills. The Washington football team was, was ultra, ultra, ultra trash. Taylor Heineke had a so-so game. It was his first game on the road as a starter. Had two touchdowns, two interceptions. Antonio Gibson was a no-show when it comes to the run game, but he did have that one screenplay for 73 yards. So kudos to him there. Josh Allen is back. I told people that Josh Allen is back, and he had 358 yards, four touchdowns, versus the Washington football team, who's supposed to have a really good defense, who the defense have not been available this year. I have not seen that defense. I've been looking. I haven't seen that defense. Josh Allen also ran in for another touchdown, giving him five touchdowns. So if you had him in fantasy football, you most likely won your matchup. There was even a, a Mitchell Trubisky sighting. He had one attempt, one completion for one yard. Shout out to Mitchell Trubisky. Uh, the run game for the Buffalo Bills was decent with Zach Moss leading the way, 13 carries for 60 yards. But in the receiving game is where they went to work. Cole Beasley, 11 receptions, 98 yards. Emmanuel Sanders, five receptions, 94 yards, and two scores. Dawson Knox pitched in with a score. Zach Moss also had a touchdown as well. We move on to the next game, which is the Chicago Bears versus the Cleveland Browns. This game right here was funny because everybody was telling me how great Justin Fields is. Justin Fields this, Justin Fields that. And Justin Fields got to play. He got to start. He had 20 pass attempts, six completions for 68 yards. How does an, a quarterback starting in the NFL, 68 yards? He was sacked nine times. Not one, not two, not three, but nine times. That's crazy. That's just crazy to me. Also, David Montgomery, where, have, where has he been? So with the quarterback play being so bad, everybody was roasting Andy, uh, Andy Dalton when the coach said that Justin Fields was not ready. People didn't believe. Now they're starting to see that Justin Fields is not ready. And when you look at it, he's not ready. Allen Robinson, as great as he is, only had two receptions for 27 yards. He's being wasted away here. Who knows? Maybe Allen Robinson is a trade-away candidate uh, this season because the Chicago Bears are going nowhere. And unless Justin Fields just takes a remarkable you know, spin or whatever, this is not what you want out of a quarterback. Don't be surprised if Nick Foles is starting next week. Baker Mayfield was okay, 246 yards and a touchdown. But this was the Kareem Hunt show. Nick Chubb didn't have 84 yards rushing, but Nick, uh, Kareem Hunt rushed 10 times for 81 yards and a score. He also had six receptions for 74 yards. Also, the return of Odell Beckham Jr. He looked sharp. He looked crisp out there. Five receptions for 77 yards. Shout out to OBJ. He's back. Now, let's look at this defense for the Cleveland Browns. Miles Garrett had four and a half sacks. Four and a half sacks for Miles Garrett. The guy is amazing. Let's put him in the Hall of Fame right now. Put him in the Hall of Fame right now. Jock had half a sack. Uh, Malik Jackson, half a sack. 
Uh, Clowney had two sacks, something that he n- normally doesn't do, get sacks. Ronnie uh, Harris Jr. had a sack. Uh, McKinley had half a sack. So nine sack sacks for this defense. And I was at the sports bar watching uh, the Washington game, and I saw some Bears fans screaming and yelling and clapping their hands. When I look up at the scoreboard, it was like 10 to 3. And I'm like, these guys are excited. What are they excited for? And then now you look at the box score and you're like, oh, my gosh, this is ridiculous. Moving on to the next game, you got the Baltimore Ravens versus the Detroit Lions. This game right here was crazy to me. Um, I laughed. I laughed so hard watching this game because Baltimore beats Kansas City Chiefs last week, right? And, you know, they're hype. Oh, yeah, man, we're the squad. We're going to like, do great and mighty things this year, blah, 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 blah. And then Lamar Jackson comes out against a poor Lions defense, and he struggles. 287 yards, a touchdown, and an interception. But it was really how this game ended. You know what I'm saying? These guys these guys needed a long, what was it, fourth and 19. Fourth and 19. They complete a pass. They get to the 50-yard line, and I told my guy, I'm like, this is going to be a 65-yard field goal. It ended up being a 66-yard field goal. Justin Tucker, the GOAT, the greatest kicker to ever live on earth, kicked a 66-yard field goal to win the game. Not only did he win the game, he broke the NFL record. Shout out to Justin Tucker. What an amazing game. And the funny thing was, like I said, I was, I was at the sports bar, and I saw a Lions fan. I was talking to him the whole time. He was like, look, all I need, all I need is a win. I said, are you celebrating? He goes, no, I'm not celebrating yet. They complete that fourth down play. And he's like, oh, my gosh. Then they line up for the kick. He's like, no way, no way. They make the field goal, and it looked like he missed it. So, the, like, the Lions fan is like celebrating. And I'm like, yo, bro, sorry, the field goal did count. He was mad. He was just cussing. He was like, you know what, he's not going to support this team for the rest of the year. But the bright side for the Ravens this game is that Mark Andrews played a magnificent game, five receptions, 109 yards. Uh, Mark Andrews, welcome back to the NFL. The Lions still need a lot of help. Uh DeAndre Swift and Jamal Williams were both able to score touchdowns. Those are the two most important pieces for them on offense. Uh, But they need some receivers, man. There's no scenario why Khalif Raymond should lead your team in receiving yards. They need some kind of juice. And I'm really surprised with the mighty Ravens uh, defense. They didn't perform at all this week. Uh, They didn't perform well. Uh, and it's sad because it's the Lions. It's the Lions. It's, it's a team that nobody trusts. It's a team that people say, you know, it's not all that good and whatnot. We move on to the next game. The Arizona Cardinals versus the Jacksonville Jaguars. Colin Murray continues to play well. Granted, he didn't have a touchdown this game. He did have 316 yards passing, one interception. He didn't really run the ball like his typical Colin Murray self, but he did have a rushing touchdown. This game belonged to James Conner, who had two rushing touchdowns. Chase Evans was nowhere to be found running the ball, passing the ball. He, you know, receiving the ball. He caught seven catches for 49 yards. But let's look at what the Cardinals were able to do. A.J. Green had an amazing game, blasting the pass, five receptions for 112 yards. Christian Kirk, seven receptions for 104 yards. So what this is telling me is that you now have Christian Kirk, who has out-targeted Hopkins this week. Last week, it was Rondell Moore who out-targeted Hopkins. What this is telling me is that Colin Murray is finding whoever that's open. He doesn't care about, oh, this guy gets the targets, this guy gets the targets. He's not going to force feed anybody. And Colin Murray's doing well finding everybody. Just to see A.J. Green with uh, 100-plus yards once again, that's amazing. you got to give A.J. Green all the credit and all the props. Now, you look at the Jags. Trevor Lawrence continues to play bad. I don't know what it is with Trevor Lawrence. You, I mean, you you think that, okay, he's going to have a breakout game here or there. But, it, I mean, this is the NFL. NFL is tough. But James Robinson did return. 15 carries, 88 yards, and a touchdown. And then he also had six receptions for 46 yards. So, James Robinson was good, especially for fantasy owners. DJ Chark continues to score touchdowns. Marvin Jones continues to be a focal point. The LaVisca Chenault hype train I still have not seen what all the hype is with LaVisca Chenault. So uh, Cardinals win this game 31 to 19. Not really much to talk about there. One of the most exciting games of the year was the Kansas City Chiefs versus the Chargers. 
What we've seen is the Chiefs have started the season one and two. Everybody was saying the Chiefs are unstoppable. Who can beat the Chiefs? This and this, this and that. They lose once again, and the Chiefs are last place in that division. Are the Chargers for real? I think the Chargers are for real. Justin Herbert had 100 and I mean 281 yards passing, four passing scores. Austin Eckler, 11 carries for 55 yards. He also had six receptions for 52 yards and a score. Keenan Allen had a score, eight receptions, 50 yards. Mike Williams, I was wrong about this guy. It took this guy five years to become really, really good. Um, he had seven receptions for 122 yards, two scores. Can Mike Williams keep this going? Maybe. I have my skepticism, and you guys will hear that on the fantasy show that's coming out later today uh, regarding Mike Williams. But overall, a super, super performance by the Chargers and their offense. They were able to get that go-ahead touchdown to Mike Williams to take the lead, game-winning touchdown. I mean, that's just magnificent. Even going for it on fourth down and converting in order to set up this play. Uh, Justin Herbert is going to take this team as far as they can go. I mean, he's the leader of this team. He goes as far as, as he goes. But Patrick Mahomes, what was so uncharacteristic about this guy was he had two interceptions. Patrick Mahomes also had three touchdowns, but only 260 yards. Patrick Mahomes does not lose in September. He's lost twice. Patrick Mahomes does not throw interceptions in September. He's thrown multiple interceptions. So Patrick Mahomes is human. He's looking very human. Travis Kelsey only had, uh, not only, Travis Kelsey had seven receptions for 104 yards, but it wasn't enough. Tariq Hill had five receptions for 56 yards. Where was the rest of the offense? Nobody knows. We are all still searching for the rest of this offense. Uh, they brought in Josh Gordon, Josh Flash Gordon. Um, I don't think he makes a difference. Uh, we'll see what happens. But the silver lining in this loss for the Kansas City Chiefs is that Clyde Edwards Hilaire had 17 carries for 100 yards. So maybe this is something that they can add on to the team that might create some kind of momentum moving forward. But that Chiefs defense is very bad. They need to make a trade or two uh, by this deadline. They, they, I mean, something has to happen. Defenses just move through the Chiefs like, like they're water. OK, so that can't happen if they if they have Super Bowl aspirations this season. Now, moving on to the next game, you got the New Orleans Saints versus the um, New England Patriots. Now, the, the, the Saints were very bad last week. You know what I'm saying? Everybody was talking all this stuff about Jameis Winston. Jameis Winston was solid this week. Two hundred and uh, one hundred and twenty eight yards passing two touchdowns. OK, Kamara was able to run the ball semi-effectively, 24 carries for 89 yards. Yes, it's 3.7 yards on average per carry. But at the end of the day, it wasn't about the offense. It wasn't about Kamara. It wasn't about James Winston. It was about this Saints defense. This Saints defense is elite. And granted, yes, they played a rookie, but it doesn't matter. They did what they were supposed to do versus this rookie. Matt Jones had one touchdown, but he had three interceptions. And it just bodes well for the Saints. Matt Jones also led these guys in rushing. Six carries for 28 yards. That can't happen. Mac Jones is not athletic. Mac Jones can't even run. And he led your team in rushing. Something is wrong with this team. But the silver line, and we always talk about silver liners, especially when it relates to fantasy, when we talk about that, Kendrick Bourne had six catches, 96 yards, and a touchdown. Jacoby Myers had nine receptions for 94 yards. So tons of targets to these guys. It was the Bourne and Myers show. The tight ends that these guys bought haven't really done anything. James White did get hurt. He, he broke his hip. He's going to be out indefinitely. I don't think he comes back this season. Uh, but uh, on the flip side for the Saints, Callaway and uh, Kamara were able to get some catches. James Winston didn't make a crazy throw, uh, a James Winston type throw. But luckily for him, Callaway caught it to make him look good. But uh, Marshawn Lattimore phenomenal game. He's just one of the best in the business. These guys were able to get a couple of sacks on this rookie. And like I said, they were able to create turnovers and that's what it takes. That's what it takes. You got to dominate the teams that you need to dominate. And the saints have done that so far. Are the saints an elite team this year? I don't know. Only time will tell. Moving on, you have the Atlanta Falcons versus the New York Giants. And all I can say is that it was two terrible teams, two bad teams. This, this could have gone either way. Matt Ryan had 243 yards passing, two touchdowns. Uh, Mike Davis ran the ball just a little bit better, 
Cordero Patterson just continues to lead this team in not just uh, yards, but in just plays, plays in general. He had six receptions for 82 yards. Uh, he continues to do well for fantasy players. He's been more productive than Calvin Ridley. He's been more productive than Mike Davis. So, I mean, this is great. This is great for them. Um, also, Kyle Pitts, all the hype that he brought with him has not uh, uh, amounted to anything just yet. But the Falcons do play a poor Washington's defense next week. Both teams are poor. Maybe the Falcons go uh, two and two, or maybe Washington go two and two next week. But that's another uh, a matchup of two poor teams. The Giants, um, Daniel Jones, this one wasn't on Daniel Jones. It wasn't on Daniel Jones. Um, you know, Saquon Barkley played a little bit better, 50, 51 yards rushing and a touchdown. Uh, Kenny Galladay just hasn't been what they hoped he would be. There should be no reason why Colin Johnson comes in and almost produces the same amount of, of stats or even plays as a Kenny Galladay. So um, the Giants did lose Blake Martinez. He is one of the best, one of the entire best linebackers out there. So they're going to have to try to do it by committee. Uh, but, yeah, that just took a huge blow for this defense. Uh, so, like I said, this game, it, it, it wasn't fun. Uh, it was just a game. You know what I'm saying? We're just happy to have football back. But I'm telling you, that game was pretty boring. I'm not even going to lie about that. Uh, next game I want to highlight is the Pittsburgh Steelers versus the Cincinnati Bengals. The Pittsburgh Steelers are the worst team in their division. There's going to be a team that's been good for years that doesn't make the playoffs this year. And I don't know if it's the Pittsburgh Steelers. I don't know if it's the Tennessee Titans. I don't know if it's the, the, the Chiefs or the Ravens. But with so many good teams this year and so many up-and-coming teams, somebody who's been good for the past several years – will not make the playoffs this year. I just don't know who it's going to be. Might be the Pittsburgh Steelers. I don't know. They drafted Najee Harris to be this guy. He's not that guy as of right now. That offensive line is so bad. 14 carries for 40 yards is not going to cut it. But on the receiving side, that's where Najee Harris has taken his game to a whole other level. He did have 14 receptions for 102 yards. But I want to see how can they get Najee Harris more involved in the actual running game. Because that actual running game is going to be able to grind out that clock and, and help these guys get some wins. Look, 28 touches for Najee Harris, that's good. But he still needs to do more as a runner. As a runner, like that run game is just so bad. And, of course, checking down, I mean, Najee Harris had 19 targets. You're bound to catch at least 14 of those. You know what I'm saying? A lot of those are dump-offs. So in fantasy, that's great for fantasy, but in real life, I don't know. They need to produce some wins. These checkdowns are just not happening for these guys. And they also lost their best wide receiver in Deontay Johnson. I think that Juju Smith-Schuster got hurt. I'm not sure or not, but, I mean, with the amount of yards that Big Ben had, it was a lot of dump-offs, a lot of checkdowns. Uh, Joe Burrow has been uh, awesome this year. 172 yards passing, three touchdowns, one interception. Jamar Chase, they said he couldn't catch the ball. Four receptions for 65 yards and two touchdowns. That's what you call a ball. That's a player, player right there. You know what I'm saying? Play on, player. Tyler Boyd had a good game in the absence of T. Higgins. Uh, Joe Mixon continues his strong play, 18 carries for 90 yards. Cincinnati Bengals defense have been real solid this year, led by Jesse Bates and the rest of these boys. Um, so let's see. I don't know what kind of team the Bengals are going to be. It's way too early to give an assessment. But after four games, I will give an assessment on where I think teams will possibly end up. Uh, moving on to the next game. How about them Titans? You know, I live here in Nashville. So these Titans fans were excited, man. They were excited. They were elated to get this win versus a division foe. The Indianapolis Colts, Carson Wentz came back. This guy had two sprained ankles and was able to play. Jonathan Taylor didn't give him really nothing in the run game. Uh, Michael Pittman continues a strong play with six receptions for 68 yards, but it was not enough for the Tannehill-led Titans. Derrick Henry had 28 carries this Sunday, and he had 113 yards combined. Tannehill pitched in with five carries for 56 yards, so on the ground, the Titans had 180 yards rushing, and that's magnificent. Tannehill had some turnovers, but guess what? He made it up with some with some with some pretty good plays, some pretty good touchdowns. So he didn't have three touchdowns, like I mentioned. Um, Julio Jones continues to, you know, plays still still trying to find his way. I think that Julio Jones is going to end up being a big part for for the Titans and a big part of what they you know normally do. Derrick Henry is going to have a career high in receptions this year because he's already close to that. I don't know what that exact number is. So I'm not going to say, but he also added 
three receptions for 31 yards. I love that they're targeting him in the in the pass game. Back in the day, you can just dump off a little, you know, screen pass or just a little dump off to the running back, and that's just an extension of the run game. So um, we'll see if that continues this season. But like I said, Tannehill was able to spread the ball. Chester Rogers had one. Jeremy Nichols had one. Um, Nick Westbrook, Ekine, also had a touchdown. So it's kind of nice to see no A.J. Brown, but Tannehill taking this game to the next level. So Julio would really need to lead this receiving attack next week uh, because like every game matters, every game matters. We move on to the next game, which is the Denver Broncos versus the Jets. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this game. Just know that uh, the run game was solid. Melvin Gordon and Javante Williams both had touchdowns. Tim Patrick led this team five receptions for 98 yards, and the defense continues to be solid. Um, you know, Zach Wilson threw two interceptions, and he was also sacked five times. So um, that's just what it was. That's just what it was, uh, that game. Um, Corey Davis had five receptions, 41 yards. He was, he's was he been their biggest, biggest guy that they've received, right? But at the same time, Corey Davis have not really produced like they would want. Is it uh, a, a Zach Wilson problem? Is it that Zach Wilson isn't really that good? Um, only time will tell. I, I'm a Zach Wilson fan. I hope he improves. But the Denver Broncos right now start off 3-0. The Denver Broncos have a better record than the Kansas City Chiefs, and this is amazing to me right now. Talking about another team that's in that same division, let's talk about the Las Vegas Raiders. The Raiders, they've been solid. Derrick Henry, I mean, Derrick uh, Carr is playing MVP-type ball right now. You know what I'm saying? Peyton Barber, where did you come from? This is a guy that the Washington football team didn't want. This is a castaway. This is a guy that was on the practice squad. He comes out of here, gets 23 carries with no Josh Jacobs, 111 yards rushing, and a touchdown. Now, um, Kenyon Drake, he's supposed to be that guy, the highest paid backup in the entire NFL, and this guy cannot run to save his life. Um, <laughs> Non-factor. Uh, Jacoby, Jacoby Brissett came in this game, trying to make it interesting, did take this game into overtime with his two-point conversion. You have Mike Giusecki, who had 10 receptions, Jamin Waddle, who had 12 receptions. So it just seems that between these two guys, all they want to do is pass the ball, uh, pass to these short, you know, these short, intermediate little, little passes. So I don't know, man. Does Jacoby Brissett make the Dolphins any better than Tua? I don't know. Only time will tell. We're going to see a lot of different things. But back to the Raiders, man. Derek Carr, 386 yards, two touchdowns, one interception, a magnificent game. Brian Edwards, my guy, continues to get better. Three receptions, 89 yards. Henry Ruggs, four for 78. Hunter Winfrey, five for 77. So it seems like finally Derek Carr has weapons. He has weapons finally. The Raiders are 3-0. The Broncos are 3-0, and and this is amazing to me because these are two teams that are usually on the bottom of the barrel compared to teams like the Chargers or even, you know, the Chiefs most years. So that's going to be an interesting division. Plenty of good, uh, plenty, plenty good teams and plenty of football to go. We talk about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Los Angeles Rams. The Bucs are supposed to be – an unbeatable team. Tom Brady had another phenomenal game, 432 yards passing. He only had one touchdown pass, and he led the team in rushing. That cannot happen. Tom Brady had three carries for 14 yards. This is as bad as Mac Jones uh, uh, rushing and leading his team in rushes. Really, Mac Jones is who Tom Brady is, uh, aspires to be. So it's just funny to me that both, both guys led their teams respectively in rushing. Mike Evans seems to be back, eight receptions for 106 yards. Godwin pitched in with six for 47. Tyler Johnson, three for 63 with Antonio Brown being out this game. But Matthew Stafford, another guy who I think him and Derek Carr are the two best guys right now. They're probably top three in the MVP voting if the season was to end today. Uh, Stafford, 343 yards, four touchdowns. Sony Michelle pitched in 20 carries for 67 yards. But what I saw in this game is that the Rams defense is really really good. Deshaun Jackson came out of nowhere, three for 120 yards. That's just what Deshaun Jackson does. He gets a long touchdown catch every single year. Cooper Cup has just been awesome. Nine receptions for 96 yards, two touchdowns. Van Jefferson pitched in. Overall, these guys had a pretty good game. Uh, look, the Rams are for real. 
the Rams are for real. And right now they have super, not super exceeded. Yeah, they're super exceeded my expectations. They're better than the Bucks as of right now because, I mean, they beat the Bucks, right? But we'll see what happens come December and January. Russell Wilson, your team just continues to lose. You're doing your best. He had a, a 289 yards passing. Uh, Chris Carson had a touchdown, 80 yards and a touchdown. DK Metcalf is back for real, for real. Tyler Lockett took a step back this week. Uh, Kirk Cousins just continues to, to play well this season. 323 yards passing, three touchdowns. Alexander Madison came in and had over, what was it, 20-something 20, 20 touches on Sunday, and he was able to lead this team to victory. 26 carries for uh, um, 112 yards. Justin Jefferson had a good game, nine receptions for uh, 118 yards. These guys looked good. I don't know how far the Vikings can go this year. But if they can just give you anything on defense, they can be special this season. We move on to the last two games, which was the Green Bay Packers versus the San Francisco 49ers. This game was close. This game was close. Jimmy Garoppolo let his team down, scored a touchdown, thinking that the game was over. Lo and behold, Aaron Rodgers did some Aaron Rodgers-type things uh, to win this game for them. And it was an amazing game. It was an amazing game. Aaron Rodgers just led his team to that one area to where uh, Crosby can kick that 51-yard field goal to win the game. Devontae Adams, there's, there was some controversy in this game because he got hit. And then you can think to yourself, is it a concussion? I saw his eyes roll back, but he was able to come back in. He said it was not a concussion. He had a good game. He had 12 receptions for 100 and, and, uh, 132 yards receiving and a touchdown. So those who play fantasy, they enjoyed a Devontae Adams uh, a game right there. Also, George Kittle, welcome back to the NFL. Seven receptions for 92 yards. Had a good game. Debo Samuels has taken a step back. We don't know what's going to happen with these guys. I feel like the, the Niners should just go ahead and let Trey Lance play. Jimmy Garoppolo, he's good, but he's not exciting. He's not. He, he, he doesn't move the needle. Uh, all these little bitty plays for Trey Lance, you know what I'm saying, coming in. Um, granted, the rookies have been pretty bad. Rookies have been pretty bad, so... Um, let's see what happens. It's just one of those things. It's like a wait and see approach. But uh, yeah, Green Bay was able to pull it off. You know, thirty points to twenty eight. We'll see what happens. Now we move on to the Dallas Cowboys versus the Philadelphia Eagles. Dallas won this game, forty one to twenty one. Jalen Hurts did some good things, did some bad things. Three hundred and twenty six yards. That's good. Two touchdowns. That's good. Two interceptions. That's bad. He also led his team in rushing. Nine carries for thirty five yards. But you guys tell me this. Why is it that Miles Sanders only had two carries? Why? There is something seriously wrong with the Eagles. Dallas Gordon had two big receptions for 66 yards. That Prescott has been looking really, really good. 238 yards passing, three touchdowns. Ezekiel Elliott had a good game, 17 carries for 95 yards, two scores. And I believe that Elliott probably – okay, I thought he caught a, a touchdown, but he didn't catch a touchdown. But he had two scores there. Dalton Schultz had a good game, six receptions for 80 yards and two scores. So, guys, this is my NFL recap. Please like, please subscribe, please share, and I will catch you guys on the next video.